Alright, this video covers random variables. Now we call random variables RVs for random variables, and you're about to find out what a random variable is in this video. So welcome to chapter 6. Alright, here's a couple important definitions for you. Random variables is an outcome that takes on a numerical value based on some random event. So it's got to be a numerical value, alright? So a random variable is any random event where the outcomes are numerical values. Can't have categorical data here. Alright, a probability distribution is a display that shows outcomes for a random variable and the associated probabilities for each outcome. In the past, we have called these probability models. It's the same exact thing. Model, distribution, it's just a way to show all the outcomes and their probabilities. Now, there are two types of random variables, and we're going to talk about both of them in this video. The first type is a discrete random variable, and that means the numerical outcomes are listable or finite, right? There is a finite number of outcomes. You could actually list everything that could potentially happen. Now a continuous random variable is kind of the opposite of that. A continuous random variable is that the numerical outcomes are infinite. It's impossible to make a list of all the outcomes because there's just so many of them. So we will explore both options in this video so you can understand exactly what I mean by those two different types of random variables. Alright, two more important definitions I'm going to use a lot in this video is the mean of a random variable. This is also called the expected outcome. This is the value, sorry for the typo there, this is the value we would expect out of a random variable if the random, ev if the random event were to be repeated many, many times. So this actually piggybacks right into the law of large numbers. It's the idea of what do we expect to happen in the long run after many, 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 many trials. So it's kind of like, you know, what does, uh, how many points does LeBron James score per game? Well, again, that's an average, right? That's a mean. What is the mean number of points he scores per game? Well, you're never going to know the true mean of points that he will score per game until he plays a lot, a lot of games. And since he's already played many, 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 many games, we have a good idea of his average, his expected outcome for for any game, right? Makes sense. All right, the standard deviation of random variable. Well, this is a measurement of how the outcome of a random variable would vary from trial to trial. So since the idea of an expected outcome is that we're going to repeat this random event many, 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 many times, well, then that value could vary. Sometimes it might be a little higher, sometimes it might be a little bit lower. So this actually makes a lot of sense. So here's an example, right? Let's talk about LeBron James, how many points he expects to score. Well, that would be his average of his, his um, random event. So notice my notation here. So I use a mu for the mean, but I put that little x right here. It's actually a capital X as a subscript, and that means that you're talking about a specific random variable, so how many points he could score. Now, that would kind of be a continuous random variable for LeBron James because it'd be hard to list every possibility. Um, now, you might say, well, he's limited to so many points. It's not like he could score a 1,000 points in a game. But again, it's the idea that there's a very long list of options here. So the average would be how many points we expect him to score. And we get that average by thinking about how many points he scores in a very, very, very large number of trials. So that's the idea here, right? 26.5 would be the expected outcome for any given game, and that number is found by looking at many, 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 many trials. But, you know, how many points he scores does deviate. Some days it's a little bit higher, some days it's a little bit lower. So there is a standard deviation. We have sigma here, it's our standard deviation symbol, and then we put a capital X right here as well. And again, let's just say that LeBron James is pretty consistent, right? He doesn't vary a whole lot, so maybe it's 2.3 points per game. So some days he does a little bit better, some days a little bit lower, but he's pretty consistent to his mean. Again, that's a low standard deviation. Deviation. Maybe a bad basketball player would have a very large standard deviation, meaning that they score all over the place. Some days they score zero, some days they score 30. It varies widely. That would be a large standard deviation. Now, another term I want to mention that's going to be important for later videos is this term variance. Variance is a special term for standard deviation squared. So anytime we square standard deviation, it's this term called variance. Now, we're not going to use that a ton in this video, but we will talk about that idea in later videos. All right, let's look at our first example here. This is a discrete random variable. Okay, this is definitely discrete. So I'll call this a DRV, discrete random variable. This is a game, and when you play the game, there are five distinct outcomes. You can get a one, a two, a three, four, five. I listed them all. They're all right here. This is what's known as a probability distribution or a probability model because the probability of getting a one is 0.2, the probability of getting a two is 0.1, the probability of getting a three is 0.2, a four is also 0.2, 
and a 5 is 0.3. So again, all those do have to add up to 1, follow over our probability rules, we get the idea. So again, discrete random variable because I could list all the options, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, you know, let's say we were to play this game many, many, many times. So we play it one time and we get a 2. We play it again and we get a 4. We play it again and we get a 2. Then we play it again and we get a 2. We play it again and get a 3. We play it again and get a 3. If I were to play this game many, 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 many times, what do I expect my score to be in the long run? Okay, this is an average, right? So if I were to play this game many times, what do I expect my average to be? What is my mean, right? The expected value in the long run. Well, this is actually really easy to calculate. The formula here is very simple. All you got to do is take each outcome times its probability. So I would take the first outcome of 1 times its probability, 0.2, plus the next outcome of 2 times its probability of 0 0.10, plus the next outcome of 3 times its probability of 0 0.20, plus the next outcome of 4 times its probability of 0 0.20, plus the last outcome of 5 times its probability of 0 0.30. So I'm going to quickly show you on the calculator screen here how to do this. This is very, very simple. So this would be 1 times 0.2 plus 2 times 0.1 plus 3 times 0.2 plus 4 times 0.2 plus 5 times 0.3. And I get 3.3. 3.3 is my expected outcome. Now, a lot of kids say, well, that's impossible. You can never get a 3.3. That's just dumb. Well, it's the same thing as saying LeBron James could score 27.5 points. No, he can't. You could score 27, 26. That's not the point. The point is that this is an average, right? This is an average in the long run. So if I were to play this game many, 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 many infinite times, if I were to average all of those outcomes, I would get an expected value of 3.3. Now, the formula for standard deviation, right? Because we know that you might get something higher, you might get something lower. This number does deviate a little bit. The formula is a little bit uglier here. I'm going to write the formula down, but I'm actually going to teach you a shortcut to find it. What you do is you take the sum of each outcome minus its expected value squared times its probability and then you square root all of that. So that's a pretty <laughs> ugly formula. Again, you take the sum of each outcome minus its expected value times uh, or squared times its probability. Very ugly formula. And in fact, I will never expect you to learn, use that formula. Here is how you could get that on your calculator. What you do is you go to stat, edit, and now we got to enter into list one our outcomes. So our outcomes are one, two, three, four, and five. And then in list 2, we list the probabilities. That's 0.2 for the 1, 0.1 for the 2, 0.2 for the 3, 0.2 for the 4, and 0.3 for the 5. So basically, we're putting the probability distribution into our calculator. And then all you have to do from here is hit stat, slide over to calc, and we're going to do a one variable stat, but we have to tell it to use list 1 and use list 2. we got to make sure that it uses both lists so that it calculates the expected value based on the probability. So you got to make sure both go there, L1, comma L2. Hit enter. And this is pretty cool. It not only does it tell us the standard deviation right here with the little sigma x, but if you look up above, it also gives you the average. So I don't even have to use this formula up here to find the average. I can use my calculator to get both numbers. So it's 1.49 is the standard deviation, 1.49. So what I learned is that when I play this game many, 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 many times, I expect to get a score of 3.3, but that number could deviate by 1.49. So it's pretty cool how our calculator could do all that for us. All right, here's another example. Um, this was an example we did in class actually a while ago with how many kids could be absent on any given day. Could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids be absent. This is another example of a discrete random variable. Um, whoop discrete random variable, DRV, because again, there's only so many outcomes possible, and I could actually list them all. There they all are. I listed them, and this is a probability distribution because I have the probabilities here. What I want to know is if I were to look at many, many, many days, many, 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 many days, not just one day, just many, many days, I want to know how many kids do I expect to be absent in the long run. 
and with what standard deviation. So basically what we're trying to say is on a typical day, just like on a typical basketball game, how many points do you expect LeBron James to score? So on a typical day, how many kids do we expect to be absent? So once again, I'm going to let my calculator do both things at once for me, which is a huge help. So stat edit. Again, clear out list two and clear out list one. Remember, hit uh, highlight L1, hit clear down to clear it out. Options go in list one. One, two, three. Uh, 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 uh. So make sure all the options go there, and then make sure you put all the associated probabilities there. I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit here so I can see them all. So 0.1 for 0, 0.35 for 1, 0.2 for 2, 0.15 for 3, and 0 0.10 for 4. 5 is 0 0.0... Oop, I typed that in wrong. Be careful. 0.02 for 5. 6 is 0.05 and 7 is 0 0.03. Again, make sure you take the time to double check that you type all those in there correctly. You definitely don't want to type those in there wrong. And um, here we go. Stat, edit, or stats, sorry, stats, let over to calc, one variable stats. you got to make sure you tell it list one, comma, list two. Notice where I'm getting list one and list two from. I'm hitting second number one, second number two. And I get an expected value of 2.21 kids absent per day and a standard deviation of 1.73. So again, that's 2.21 and 1.73. Notice I'm running to two decimals, which is, for the most part, okay. So I expect 2.2 kids to be absent on any given day, 2.21, with a standard deviation of 1.73. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, kids say, well, you can't have 2.21 kids be absent. I know. This is the idea of what we expect to happen in the long and if I were to look at many, many days of school, maybe a whole year, heck, maybe a whole decade, many, many, many days, I expect the average amount of kids absent each day to be 2.21, and that number could deviate by 1.73. All right, now we're going to jump up and talk about continuous random variables now. Discrete random variables are pretty easy. Your calculator is a huge help. I hopefully, you know, I convince you how simple that is. But now let's talk about continuous random variables. Since continuous random variables can take on an infinite number of outcomes, we actually cannot make a chart of each outcome and its probability. I mean, think about it. The outcomes are infinite. How could you possibly make a list of all of them or a chart of all of them? But we can make a density curve to show the possible outcomes. And the most famous of all is the normal model. So instead of showing a chart of all the different outcomes, what we do is we think of this infinite x-axis, right? So let's think of a let's think of a continuous random variable, right? A continuous random variable would be um, how many minutes I brush my teeth, right? How, this would be capital X, how many minutes brush your teeth? Okay, now if you start thinking about decimals, like this could be very, 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 very infinite, right? I mean, I guess I could start down here at zero, and I could go to one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, but that can even continue on. And when you start to throw in decimals, I mean, I guess I could do 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 1.25, 1.75, 2.25, 2.75. I could even get closer, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. I mean... The options are endless, right, when you actually start thinking about decimals here. So how many minutes you brush your teeth when you start throwing decimals on, there's definitely continuous random variables. And the idea is that I can make a model. Like, I know that it's going to take me somewhere around one and a half. So maybe it's going to look like this, where it's really, really big there at one and a half, and then it starts to slowly trickle down. So again, it's kind of a bad curve, but maybe that would be a little bit skewed right. Like, very few times do I spend over three minutes, but most of the time I'm around one to one and a half minutes. So again, we could use a model a you know density curve to actually show what's happening here all right let's look at an example and how we already know how to do this perfectly and you're gonna be like wow i already know all that all right the weights of three-year-old females closely follow a normal model or a normal distribution with a mean of 30 pounds and a standard deviation of 3.6 so i'm already giving you the expected value right what do you expect a three-year-old to weigh well 30.7 pounds but that number might deviate a little bit and that's the standard deviation 3.6 now it does say it falls normal model so if i think about a random three-year-old girl i say okay well what could she weigh well i'm going to put 30.7 smack dab in the middle because i know when it comes to this 
normal model. That's a very bad normal model, I'm sorry. But you get the idea that right smack dab in the middle goes the mean. Then we go up one, we go up two, we go up three standard deviations. So if I'm using my calculator here, I'm thinking 30.7 plus 3.6 takes me to 34.3 plus another 3.6 takes me to 37.9 plus another 3.6 takes me to 41.5 now again this actually does technically go on forever because I guess a female girl could weigh more than that but it would be very very unlikely which is what the curve shows me so I could also go down 1 2 3 standard deviations so 30.7 minus 3.6 takes me to 27.1 Minus uh, another 3.6 takes me to 23.5. Minus another 3.6 takes me to 19.9. And again, that does, you know, it is possible that a three year old girl could weigh less than that, but that would be very, very, very rare and likely. So we get this idea of this is continuous because, I mean, if you start thinking about decimals, I couldn't possibly list every possible weight. But because I have the normal model, I can actually think about what this would look like in terms of a probability distribution, right? So which is kind of cool, watch this, right? If I say, okay, what's the probability that this random girl weighs over 34.3, sorry, thir um, oh boy, did I really mess that up? What is the probability that a random girl weighs over 34.3 pounds? Okay, well, how can I figure this out? Well, I know 34.3 pounds is a Z-score, oh, a Z-score, right, of exactly one, one standard deviation above the mean. So how can I answer this question? Well, guess what, guys? It's our old good friend here, the normal CDF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, second VARS, grab normal CDF, and I'm trying to find the probability that a random girl weighs more than 34.3 pounds, which is a z-score of 1. So I'm going to go from there to 99, that's acting like my infinity, and I get 15.87%. So 15.87% of, I guess would be the probability that a 3-year-old girl weighs over 34.3 pounds. So let's try another one. What's the probability that a random 3-year-old girl weighs less than um, 26 pounds? Well, 26 falls somewhere right around here. I guess i got to find the z-score on my own. Well, sorry, that's pretty easy, though. So take 26 minus 30.7, divide by 3.6 to get the z-score here. So 26 minus... 30.7 divided by 3.6, I get a z-score of negative 1.31, negative 1.31, which makes complete sense as to where that's at. So now when I go and grab my calculator here, I'm going to grab normal CDF. And remember, I want to look below. I'm going to find the probability that this girl weighs less than 26. That's going to start at negative 99. And I'm going to go up to her z-score of negative 1.31. Hit enter, and I get 9.51%. So 9.51 is the probability, 9.51% is the probability that I randomly grab a three-year-old girl that weighs less than 26 pounds. So you get the idea that um, because it's continuous, I can't necessarily make this perfect model, but because I know it's normal, I could put all the options on this continuous x-axis where I can go all the way left, all the way right, but I know I'm normal, which means I know I'm centered around that mean. I know that I can go up one, two, three standard deviations in both directions, up and down, and I can answer any question based on the normal model, which I have normal CDF to help me. So hopefully you understand random variables. Keep in mind this big concept here is that there are two types of random variables, discrete and continuous, and no matter the type, you always want to think about, if I were to look, um, think about many, 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 many outcomes, what do I expect the average to be? That is mu, that's the expected outcome, but that outcome could deviate, and that's where the standard deviation comes in. So pretty easy, hopefully you learned how to use your calculator to do a lot of the work for you guys in this video, and that's about it. We'll see you in the next video.